Hello, beautiful, amazing, fantastic world, and you, individual out there. Today, I would just like to speak about how from childhood I have always been, and I think about I think about it back now, that in most movies I've been watching, and in certain genre of stories and adventures and such. I personally have always been very interested in the mentor archetype or the mythical mentor. That means the wizard in the tower, the guru in the cave, the reclusive hermit, you name it. The reclusive shaman, the medicine man. I don't know why, but in these movies and adventures, the forefront have always been the hero that has been trained by these mentors so that the hero can go on further. But I have always been very interested and very, very, it, more or less mesmerized by these characters. The inner strength, the individuality, the experience and all the knowledge and wisdom they have and last but not least they are mentors for heroes that means that once upon a time they themselves were heroes that means that they are in no way unimportant if you should call it that they are so underestimated though because their deeds were in the past but their deeds have helped mankind to where they are today and they are so wonderfully, wonderfully shown in their capability of training others, of understanding others, of truly, it is a devotional, reverent feeling to the world and to others. And those that want to come to ask, they always, he always answers, he always wants to help. That is why he's there. He is not there just to waste time. He is not there just to be aloof. He truly is every day, every moment. He is trying to master his craft of mentorship and teaching. He is a student himself that way. Oh, the, the mentors of old, they never stopped at some point. And this is where I will, this is where I crystallize as a mentor. No, no. They learn as long as they mentor. They are students also, and they learn from others, just as they teach others. But of course, this has nothing to do with having control or having manipulative abilities or fronting oneself or uplifting oneself to an excellent status above anyone. This is to uplift the whole of humanity so that everyone can wake up to these kinds of feelings for the deep truth of things is the best way I can describe it. As I was saying with the mentor, in earlier times, when there were kings and, and emperors and rulers of countries and of kingdoms, there were high priests and high priestesses and hierophants that trained in the background, the rulers to become true and just and loving, caring rulers. And that teaching came from the spiritual world. These priests that were no in name and in fame, they were not that big, but they had extreme influence and were very powerful in their knowledge and wisdom and care for humanity especially when we were at our peak of spiritual society. But today we have fallen from that kind of insight. And to long for that past, we can never get back uh, like it was then. We can only build towards something new, something that will last, something that truly will include everyone that wants to be included. This has to do with freedom. 
And that is what the mentor role is trying to fill. He's just trying to show in examples and in experimentation and exploration what the human being is about. So that he can show to others what this life is about. Because everyone is wondering, but don't you ask yourself, I am different from everything around me. I am different from any animal. There is no animal alike than, uh, alike humankind. The closest we have is the, uh, is the, pri- the higher primates. And they are still far away from us when it comes to our inner faculties for perception and cognition in general. We have the ego. We have the individualized ego that allows ourselves to become aware of ourselves, our desires, our pains and pleasures, our interests, sorrows, joys, and also our life force, our inner health, our life formative forces, why we are formed and shaped like this, and how to master what the human beings have. It really is required to be a little curious and truly want to know these questions because with patience and truly, truly looking around and trying to beg a little for spirit is what I like to call it, you will be given it over time. But patience and faith, love, hope, that is required and you will be given the right kind of knowledge to grow from moment to moment. And that, and then over a certain period of time, when you have built your own instruments for perception, for consciousness, for feeling, for imagination, for in, uh, inspiration and for intuition, for example, then you can start to study yourself, individual, is, instead of having to take from everyone and everything to feel safe in a sense. You experiment directly instead and find out what is this about. Over time, observe and see, like experimentation, it's kind of being in a laboratory, the laboratory of life. But you have love and you have spirit and you you have you're looking openly and interestingly what is going to happen next. Not, I am going to prove or disprove or make an hypothesis of what I think is going to happen and then I'm going to see if it, if it happens. It is too cold, too detached. It has to, to truly be alive and to truly be inclusive and participate in your own experiments you have to be there with your whole being with your whole body and everything while you it's like you are using your thinking feeling and willing just as you use your hands and your fingers and your movements like you walk almost and that is what the mentor is here for to show you that There there exists parts of a human being we have more or less never heard about. And that you find out by being curious and wanting to become the mentor. I aspire to become the mentor, but I also am the eternal student. Being both mentor and student, all of us are. And that is just some choose to focus on it as a main role in life. Others have it more or less as a consequence or as a result of the way we live. You see where I'm going. So it is only about priority. I personally, I really, really revere and appreciate and aspire and get inspiration from teachers, from teacher, from teacher characters, from teacher archetypes. From uh, like Gandalf, uh, like uh, Dumbledore. Dumbledore is not the best of examples because he was, uh, he, he is a good example too, truly. He was very wise and very knowledgeable. <clears throat> but the mentor, uh, that type of role in general, Mer- Merlin, I can, uh, I can, if I would sit there and think about more, I can get you many, many examples. 
but in the end it only gives it points towards that type of feeling I want to grow into I truly revere that that type of character because they are strong independent loving caring righteous uplifting gallant they are just otherworldly characters and aren't those kind of role models worth aspiring to that is what i want to leave with you today and i thank you all for listening to me you beautiful beautiful human beings you are so amazing and keep doing what you do because it is necessary today to truly find spirit again to find love care hope and faith love the most important of all of these the love for the next human being no matter from where and to not be afraid of evil but truly find out what it's about so that we can overcome it with love thank you everyone may the hierarchy christ and all masters of old bless you all with wisdom love and knowledge so that you can find out for yourself what this is about. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye.